Kia ora New Zealand, welcome to Sweet Chain Live, my name's Matt Drake, this is episode 157, hope you're all doing well tonight, um, I'm joined this evening, as ever, by my co-host Morgan Harvell, good evening Morgan, how are you? Hey Matty, I'm good brother, how are you, and welcome to the chat. Uh, I'm, I'm very good, thank you, um, how, how's your week been, you've been, I've, I've seen on your socials you've been jumping in the lake a lot, is that, is that... Same, hey, different day, same lake. <laughs> <laughs> different day, same lake. Yeah, it's been good, man. Really, really good week. Uh, yeah, I think we did every day in the lake this week. Fantastic. Got three rounds of disc golf in, wow. uh, a couple of in, couple of ends of lawn bowls, and a little bit of work sprinkled in the mix. Oh, fantastic! Sounds very good. What, uh, what, what did you? Who? What did you get to play? Uh, played a couple of rounds at Jardine and one at Tucker's. Didn't quite manage to get to the Queenstown Gardens, but. Good to be back out on Tucker's, man. It's been a long time, and God, I love it out there. It's just such an incredible course. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And how was your how was your week? Uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Um, yeah, being been not getting much sleep and doing doing. Yeah, uh... little man keeping you on your toes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but I did did manage to get out for Hosker, the uh, the the monthly uh, club round um, at Hikoi Koi on um, uh, Saturday, just gone. Uh, so they there was there was two rounds. The the first round of nine is a themed round where they do something different, they mix it up a little bit. This week it was um, a two disc round, so you had to pick any two discs and just play all of your shots with that. And I picked a, nice. a musket and a trust. Were my were my two, um, and yeah, managed to um, managed to. I, I think did, did I? I don't know if I tied for the lead or tied for second. Um, oh no, I came second overall. I think I came second overall, there you go. Um, which was enough to get me onto lead card. Um, and for the championship round, uh, sorry, I tied third in the in the theme round, uh, which was enough to get me on the lead card for the championship round. Um, where I tied second, um, and it was a bag. Fantastic. It was a bag tag scramble. So I went in with number twenty one, came away with number six. So that's progress. <laughs> <Number six. laughs> that's progress there in the go. right direction. So yeah, very happy with that. Um, uh, yeah, very happy. Um, so yeah, got to play out. Got to get out and play some disc golf. So uh, and I'm, nice one. So so two discs. A musket is like a ten ten speed. That's right. Slight, not flippy, but slightly turny driver. Uh, yeah, it's got a bit. Trust. It's got a bit of turn. Not for yeah. me, but for most people, it's got a bit of turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a trust is just like laser beam, right? Oh, it's it's a little bit of a. It's a slightly overstable buzz so if you can imagine you've got a buzz in like um you know if you can imagine you've got a buzz in like i don't know titanium or something then then yeah, that yeah. that would be that would be the equivalent um yeah nice. um so yeah. yeah it's a couple of good disc choices right there yeah i mean I, I was discussing this with some people some a lot of people bought a putter and i was like i don't really need a putter because i don't throw a putter particularly so and and it for, for me, it didn't really matter um, what disc I throw within five meters, right, to putt with. It, it, it's going to go where I put it, irrelevant of, of, of what it is. And so I, I picked discs that I felt would work best off the tee. And at Hikoi Koi, there's a few short holes um, and there's a few long holes. Uh, Brett, yeah, they both do air bounce quite well. You weren't there, so uh, you wouldn't know. So... <laughs> Hey, we, um, we all know about a good air bounce around here at Sweet Chain Live. <laughs> Look, the air bounce, I will say, right, you go and watch. There's plenty of people out there who air bounce a hell of a lot and don't get the stick that I get for my air bounce, all right? There's a lot of people who go out there and air bounce. I'll give you two people, one New Zealander and one US pro. The US pro is Matt Oram. If you've watched Matt Oram throw, he's got an air bounce, right? You yep. watch it from the side. Second person with a with an air bounce in this country who throws a hell of a far, Connor McKinstry. You watch it. Next time you next time you get a chance to watch Connor throw side on, he's 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 got an air bounce. It goes far, right? He's got distance. He's yeah. got, he does what I can't do. Um, uh, but I, I I am I am only air bounce. That's uh, <laughs> that that's how I play. We we make it work for us. All right. That's we may it. not be number one. But we're number somewhere down. Number the list. somewhere down the list. <laughs> well, talking of numbers on the list, uh, today is a uh, a, a fantastic episode um, because we're going to be going, we're going to be putting a stat amongst the pigeons, 
um, and, uh, and and going through all of 2023's um, UDISC uh, statistics in terms of uh, where where people have played, how many people have played, all that kind of stuff. And we're going to go into it in a little bit more detail, have a chat about uh, about it as we go. You saw the stats very briefly beforehand, so I did. You, you may not. I have... did, and it, when we were uh, when we were in the countdown to the show, I even put it in the uh, in the chat here. I went. We need Statman Adam Rhymes. I feel like I'm in the wrong role right now. I should be kicked off stream, and I need my sidekick, my number one Adam Rhymes, sitting in the seat well, for me because he is the Statman. You're... And I'm sorry to break you up, but I have to put this out there. Go on. Nothing. I read the wrong thing. I thought we'd hit 350 subscribers, but we're at 344. We're... Come on, guys. If you're in the chat, <laughs> like, follow, subscribe. I was going to say, 350. We, we do only need six. <laughs> six more subscribers gets us to the goal of doing another um, giveaway. So if you're sat there, and one in four people is sat there, unsubscribed watching this. So, uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if, you, if you feel like it, hit the subscribe button, get us towards our goal, and then we'll do a giveaway probably next week. Oh, hopefully, um, uh, and uh, I jumped and we'll, the gun a wee bit there. <laughs> we'll sort something out. Um, right, let's get on with it for the first uh, set of stats, which are the regular ones that you hear each week. Is hot scores now? What also um, is going to be changing is these are the last time that these particular courses will be used for hot scores. After this week, we will we'll be using the top twenty courses, which we'll be revealing to you later on in the show so um morgan um take us through the south all right matt well you you've gone ahead and thrown henderson into my uh, oh into my i've done it scores. again leave that <laughs> as long as you've got it on i do i have got it on mine yeah yeah i've got it on mine leave, leave it to perfect. me perfect all yeah, right then me. then as always not starting at henderson <laughs> starting off in the deep south at queen's park we have got mr tiaki at a 45 12 under par shooting us off with a hot score for the week uh, then we're headed over to Chingford and we've got the one and only Lance Essen at five under par. Sticking it on down to Dunedin, we've got Brockville and we've got Jens Moller, Sergey Sannon and Isaac Latter all on five under par. Good shooting there. Good shooting there this week, boys. Uh, headed on into my neck of the woods and we've got Stiffmeister on a minus 10 at the Queenstown Gardens. And then we're going over to my guy, Gus Van Gisteren at the Tucker Beach Disc Golf Course with a minus eight this week, taking down the hot score. Good shoot in there, brother. Uh, headed on over to Ely Point in Wanaka. We've got Ben Quinn with a six under par. Tagged alongside him, John Menzies, also with a six under par. Ten under par gets the job done this week at Lismore for none other. Who else but the one and only Mundo McDisc. Again, ten under par at Lismore. Hot shooting there. We're going to shoot all the way out to Jelly Park, and his name is going to throw me through the absolute works here, but we've got Khalib, Alan, <laughs> Kokuri, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Kokuri Leach with a 15 under par. For someone that I've not had the pleasure of meeting or <laughs> hearing of, 15 under par is an absolutely Solid. insane score, so great shooting there, Khalib. Uh, Ascot Park also up in Christchurch, we've got Sam Cole at 6 under par. Queen's Park Reserve and none other than Zach Taylor of NZDSS with a seven under par. And Old Red is rounding us out this week with a two under par at Taylor River. And we're going to shoot up north all the way to Henderson. And we're going to let Matt take the over. <laughs> Well, we're going to start in Wellington. So we're going to kick off in Barrenport oh. in the hills. Uh, and it's Liam Haberfield again. Hits seven under par. The second week in a row, he's been the uh, the hot score in the capital. Um, over here, Koi Koi across the water. And it's Brady Kush who hits five under par. That was at the fiend round, actually, um, at Hosker at the weekend. Uh, Harcourt Park, Andy Davy hits five under par. That was last night at League. Uh, Link later, Johnny Wake hits ten under par. And up at Maryland's, um, Connor McKinstry, Jason Gray, Tom Robinson, Roberts and Jim all can't decide who's best, um, all shooting two under par. Um, up at Spa Park Black, Jacob Bingham goes round in plus three, and an incredible score coming out of McLaren's longs with Jimmy Tutufu hitting 18 under par. You what, mate? That's that's what we've got. That's what we've got. So um, maybe... I said... I said this about Jimmy, sorry to interrupt, but I said this about Jimmy when he was down at Paradise. <clears throat> he is someone that can come out of the shadows and just smoke everyone. That guy's an incredible player. So 18 under par, shocked at the score, but not shocked that it's him. Especially at a course like McLaren's, right? So, um, yeah. yeah, incredible. Um, and finally, Henderson is Luke Hempel with, uh, with seven under par. 
Um, so well done to Luke. There we go. Um, right, now, um, we're going to be jumping uh, head first, or rather um, att- attempting to scale the heights of Statmandu um, with, uh, with, with our stats episode. Now, um, here we go. We're going to jump in, but we've got a few caveats to run through before we do. Okay. Now, it's worth saying that these results that we're looking at here, they're all... Um, based on 2023 data, right? So um, it's um, data that doesn't include uh, up until this part of the year. Um, and also it's rounds that are scored on UDISC. Now, so what does that mean? Well, it means that if you don't have a UDISC subscription because you are unaware it exists or you didn't bring your phone or you haven't renewed your membership or you just didn't fancy using it that day, your round doesn't get put into these numbers, okay? So it's worth just caveating this by saying this isn't the total number of disc golf rounds played in New Zealand. What this says is, this is the best guess we've got at a minimum of the number of rounds of disc golf played in New Zealand, right? Because there'll be plenty of people, and hopefully everyone's, each course has got one of those UDISC plaques. Did you know... Have you got one? Have you seen those? Is there one in the Queenstown Gardens? I think I've got one just over there somewhere if you need me to grab it. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Yeah, the idea is you put it up at the course because more people will see it than, yeah. than people who come to your garage. So, um, and then they, they you could. <laughs> <laughs> you, you scan pretty, pretty famous character this one. <laughs> you, you scan the the QR code on the sign, and then if you if you're new to UDISC, it takes you to download the app and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah. So, a quick question for chat: Have you renewed your UDISC membership? Put a yes or a no in the chat. I'd be really keen to see the kind of numbers that we're looking at here. Uh, I'm a yes, so uh, I shall I shall I shall go first. I shall uh, I shall confirm. Uh, I have renewed my uh, my UDISC membership. Have you renewed yours? Um, if you haven't, let us know. And if you have, then then let us know. I'd be really keen to kind of see the idea because the price has gone up this year in February, right? So the price is like fifty something bucks, I think, now for the year, which. Is quite an increase. I think it was what tw- did it go up from twenty five or nineteen ninety nine something a, like it, that. It, it, it was more than a fifty percent increase. Yeah. But look, it was so low in the in the first place. Oh, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, what was it twenty eighteen? It was like five bucks or something. Yeah, and it- <laughs> yeah. And you got and you got and most people were getting free memberships with their PDJ uh, memberships totally. yeah, yeah. and things like that. So mm. you know, I mean, it can seem like a drastic change, but fifty bucks, like realistically, not. Uh, not crazy. No, no. I, th- I think it's fair, if anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a dollar a week, right? Um, it's yeah. I, I accept the difference. Actually, I think that it'll make is that fifty bucks in one go is a little bit more off-putting than you know ten bucks or fifteen bucks in one go, right? Even though the the price difference is pretty minuscule on a weekly basis. And Tom makes a point about maybe having a monthly payment option as as well. Um, it, I, I'd imagine that the reason it's not a monthly one is it's probably just a pain in the ass to administer. Honestly, if it was if it was monthly, yeah, oh, it's definitely um, just too much admin on that and, on their side. To be fair. Um, yeah. And so they probably just go, okay, well, we'll absorb the hit in uh, you know, um, no, Willow the Wolf, uh, not yet, but will do. Uh, Twenty five on the twenty fifth of June. Is that right? Oh, is that when your might be the the time when it comes to renew? Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be so caveat asterisk next to all of these stats that this is you scored rounds only, and it, unfortunately that's the best we've got to go by. So I just want to be very clear at the beginning. Uh, it's it's, it's um, all we've got to go. By. Oh yeah, it's not even the best. Yeah. That, that's what we have to go by. Yeah. So this is what we do. Yeah, yeah. There are other scoring apps out there. I think the PDGA has one, but I I don't know if it's possible to grab. The data in the same way. I mean, you just yeah. were great. I emailed them and said, "Look, I do the show. We got. I want to do this episode. Um, can you send me some details?" And they sent me a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, anyway, let's uh, let's get into it, and um, and and let's go. There's going to be lots of lots of um, lots of Q and A during this uh, Morgan and chat. So if you if you if you want to have a guess as to to where we're going with with it all, then then yeah. So the scope is that what I, what I've done for the first few. Um, 
uh, slides here is I've focused on the top 50 disc golf courses by number of rounds scored on new disc in 2023 and then the yearly stats run from 2017 to 2023 now I got my new disc I started with new disc in October of 2018 so I don't know if I was new or relatively old or whatever getting into it but that's you know that you just has been around since 2017 i think so and that's when uh that's that's when we've got stats from obviously in 2017 far fewer people using it than now so first up here's here we go here are the courses which have fallen out of favor what we mean by this is that these five courses used to be in the top 50 last year but now aren't okay so um you can see why tower just falls outside of the uh, the, the top 50. Um, Pio Terangi has taken a, a, a big hit. I'm not sure on the uh, on on that might be due to um, closures or um, you know limited access. Um, let's see if I can. Have you have you played played Pio Terangi? No, I haven't. I haven't. Have you? Or Pio Terangi? Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's an incredible okay. course. It's um. It's yeah, it's a lot, but it's also one of the favourite courses that I've played in all of New Zealand. Yeah. Great course. If you get the opportunity, get your way up. I put Bethel's eh? So uh, it's it, it 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 probably is a case that it was unusable for 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 some of the year, and that's why it's fallen out of the top fifty. I suspect is is is, is for yep. that. Um, Places like Bayfair Reserve and Gore just look like they're kind of organic numbers where it's just it's just maybe fallen out of favour with um, maybe some uh, competition in the case of Gore um, and and perhaps uh, with with um, so you got McLaren's in Bayfair. total as well. Yeah, well, Gore Gore's kind of out of the way. Like it's if you're coming from Invercargill, say through to Queenstown, mm. you'll go through Lumsden. If you're going through Gore, it's the long way. It's not really a middle point between any two major places. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and Gore, Gore Disc Golf Course is only a few years old, so obviously it would have had that peak when it went in, got a bit of interest, and then people sort of just drops down and drops down on where they're trying to get to to mm. go and play other courses that are popping up around the area. It was it was it came in at forty nine in twenty twenty two. So uh, so yeah, this. So it, it's it, it was only just in the top fifty as it was in twenty twenty two, but has, uh, has has dropped. Yeah, I, uh, I do I do want to point out though, guys, that there is another course coming to Gore very soon. Uh, it's been approved by council, as far as I'm aware, and just working on funding right now. But that Fantastic. has been designed as designed, approved, and is on route to the area. So oh, fantastic! Gore, so Gore coming up. Gore could um, see an uptick next year, which we'll have to have to wait and see. Um, next up, then, these are the uh, forty-one to fifty um, of the most popular courses um, in New Zealand. Any any here that that jump out to you as perhaps being higher or lower than you expected? Oh, maybe. Mm. Well, Inglewood potentially. Mm. Um, I mean, it's gone up seven. It's uh, and, it's a and doubled play course. and doubled, right? So look at the growth. Yeah, and it's, doubled. It's, so... it's doubled in the in the number of people who are playing it. So it's it's seen more people going round, but still relatively low. I, Maryland's is further up this list, and we'll get to yep. that shortly. Um, not 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 <clears> shocking <throat> to me, but Jardine and at forty two. Uh, I just know there's a lot of people that play there that don't score on UDISC, so that's that yep. caveat you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's going to happen. Um, I suspect the confluence might be like that, but also the confluence is quite rugged and and at times might be unplayable due to weather and. Uh, yeah, well, the confluence is an interesting one too because it's a fantastic course. I absolutely love it out there. The Wanaka crew have done such a good job with mm. that course. They've been clearing scrub trees, replanting the whole area. It's an amazing course in my opinion, mm -hmm. but they also have Lismore, Ely Point, uh, Hawea, yeah. all courses that you can drive to, whereas, not that it's a big walk, you have to drive to the car park and then walk another 10 minutes even yeah, just to get to hold right. one of the concourse. Yeah, and, and, you know, Lismore and Ely, they've got they've got car parks they're in they're near um yep. they're in suburbs it's it's a lot easier for, for people to get to etc yeah, yeah 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 um fantastic course though played a hakuni earlier on this year morgan on the way up to topor um that's mm -hmm. a fun little course if you get a chance to 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 
to go to Okuni, then then definitely go get played around there. They've got a on their U disc actually. They've got a short course, and it is a short course. The longest hole is like sixty meters. Um, oh, and nice. I, when we played, Brett Carlisle birdied every hole, and uh, so <laughs> it was great fun. Uh, it's got a little river running down the uh, running round that affects all the holes actually. That are kind of runs snakes um, uh, down the side of the course, and it it will. It will, it will, you'll see discs go in. Like, the, the, we threw like three into the river, not deliberately, but like, they, we got three, at least three. And it, what was funny was that we were worried that we would lose them because it's quite a fast flowing river. And then we met a uh, local guy who, who came around and who um, plays it every day and was like, oh, I know where they'll be. And sure enough, <laughs> they were all lodged on this one rock that all the discs get caught by <laughs> as the river goes past. And point. that's it. And uh, and, the, and he was like, oh, no, 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 they'll be there. And they were sure they were. They went and picked him out. Um, so, yeah, if you can get to Ohokuni, then then definitely play. They've seen some growth this year as well, um, up uh, 130. Nothing like a bit of local knowledge, That's eh? it. That's it. That's what it's about. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to some some uh, bigger courses now, at 31 to 40. Um <laughs> Right, so Nottingley Park in Waimati has seen a huge growth. Now, this is largely due to that it went in late in 2022, so didn't have time to kind of uh, to, to kind of have its have its play there. Um, same with Palmerston oh, wow. North Golf Club. Um, that's a relatively new course. I forget exactly when the open day was. That was the open day for that in 2022. That seems like a long time ago. But anyway, that seems some incredible growth as well. Up 24 places. Um, uh, up to, to 40th and Nottingley Park um, is up from 70th place um, in 2022 up to 31. Um, what else? Number 35. Number 35, Isle Park Pitch and Putt. That's right. Look, uh, this isn't the first time we're going to mention Nelson today. This isn't. No. Seems to be having a bit of a this boom, isn't doesn't the it? first time we're going to be mentioning Nelson. So, um, so yeah, we shall, uh, we shall see. Um, Henley Lake. Great to see some growth there as well. I love that course. Uh, playing it in a week's just over a week's time, actually, for uh, the Dystopia um, uh, by Disconnection. Is it, have I got that right? Yeah, Dystopia by Disconnection um, that uh, Mark Clement puts on it at, at, at um, Henley Lake. 27 holes played three times in two days. Uh, not for the faint of heart, certainly. Um, and obviously the Invercargill Disc Golf South Queen's Park golf club champ course is uh, is listed on there um uh, as a separate course obviously it overlaps the main the main queen's park course which does appear on this list a little bit further up um than uh, than here uh moving on 21 to 30 so interestingly for uh, for from our perspective these courses will not be featured on our hot scores right so there's a few on here that we currently mention we we in fact ely point ascot mclaren's taylor river uh, tucker beach uh, brooker ave used to be We're, they've all been on hot scores but they won't be from this week on we are focusing simply on the top 20 courses so uh, um yeah and that's that's just a reminder guys if you want your scores on <laughs> yeah, hot get, scores, get to your local course make sure you sign up for their 50 dollar you that's it subscription that's it and get down there, play, and score so, your So, um, Bottle Lake is obviously the, the big gainer here. Um, uh, it's got a very um, active audience in Christchurch to, to draw from, and has, uh, has done so with a plum up 52 spots to 26. Um, it's got a lot of... Uh, a lot of um, it's got a lot of competition, um, Bottle Lake, in Christchurch. There's lots of... Um, courses in Christchurch. Um, Ascot um, has seen a drop in the number of um, players. Um, Brooker Ave. Yeah, well, that's in the that's in the same neighbourhood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, and so, Brooker yeah. Ave's not too far away either, eh? No, I mean all three yeah. of those are in that same that same <clears throat> district of and, Christchurch, but Ascot especially is basically right next to Model Lake, two streets. And away, Queens Park Reserve, which is also featured further up. Um, is also yep. in a, a similar kind of spot, and so probably Bottle Lake has drawn some of the numbers um, away from uh, away from those other courses in Christchurch yeah. and those kind of. I think the, dif the difference East between uh, Queens Park and these, the difference between Queens Park and these other two these other two courses is a lot shorter. Mm. It's something you can just go and 
bang yeah, around totally out for right. 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. And and Scott reminds us that those those numbers are without baskets, correct? So the tone poles uh, were replaced by baskets shortly before Tour Down Under. I don't know. Is, is that a permanent installation, the baskets from Tour Down Under? Yep. Yeah. So, yep. Um, yes, it is. So, yeah. I'm not sure if it's those baskets, but it is definitely going to be a permanent installation. Yeah. Fantastic. 100%. So, um, what other ones can we can we pick out here? Um, uh, Rotorua kind of holding steady. Um, Ely point up two, but narrowly missing out. Um, and Brooker was closed for a while. You're right, it was. It was closed for a while while they were doing some upgrades to it. So, um, so yeah, th that's yep. that's probably affecting these numbers, and you can see how it's uh, how it how it's changing things. So let's let's get into our top twenty, Morgan. Go up. Okay, so here we go. Top twenty. Um, the now there's two in here. There's two ones that I want to pick out. Number eleven. Look at number eleven, Branford Park. Six hundred and thirty-nine. It's, it's gone up by a factor of six, up twenty-seven spaces from thirty-eighth to eleventh. It's overtaken Brockville, Woodhill, Lismore, Harcourt Park. It's played more than all of those, um, all of those courses, despite gains in all of them as well. Um, for me, it's nice to see that Harcourt Park's gone up, um, and Harcourt Park is also really one of those um, courses that. You know, there's a lot of people who play that course that don't score a new disc. Um, it's a real kind of local course for, uh, for for a lot of people, and a lot of people will just go and walk the dog and chuck a disc at the same time. So, uh, and and that happens with a lot of courses. But I, I'd say Harcourt Park was perhaps in the uh, the the kind of upper quartiles of perhaps of that um, of that effect. Um, have you have you played much at Wood? I've never played Woodhill. Yeah, I, w I kind of wish you had just so you'd sort of understand what I'm going to get at here. Wood Woodhill's such an interesting place. It's not everyone's go-to in the Auckland it's area. It's quite out of town, though, isn't um, it? Is it quite out of town? North, northwest. I mean, everything's oh, yeah, I suppose um, everything's out of it's, town. For, if it's you Auckland. Yeah, yeah, it's enough. Auckland. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't you? You could be going to the centre of town, and it's yeah, still yeah. bloody hours away, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but w Wood Hill, man, I personally absolutely love that place, and they've had multiple layouts for years now that. Um, every time I seem to pop up there, it changes. Yep. There, there's different holes popping up everywhere. And man, those guys have done a fantastic mm -hmm. job with the land that they've got there, and I'm already excited to get yeah. back up there. So, shout out to Woodhill. Yeah, District. I'd like to. I'd like to get up there because they do have a several. Um, they do have several different layouts. I think there's seven layouts. I think is what I've what I've read. Yeah. Something yeah, similar yeah. like that. So, yeah, if you, if, if there's there's something for everyone. Um, so yeah. Um, what else have we got in here? Link later, uh, getting some getting some work. I think those seven hundred rounds are probably all Johnny Wake. Uh, what do you reckon? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surely. I mean, he couldn't get that good if he wasn't. I, I, I think so, yeah. I think that's that's probably what's going on there. He started in twenty twenty three, so uh, so yeah, wouldn't have had any private. Yeah, and I think I think that, and I mean this, the small decline of Chingford is only due to other courses being. Yeah, destroyed. I mean that's right, and and. and Brockville's seen a seen a game that has kind of that, that's more than uh, overcome that 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 uh, dip from Chelford. Yeah. But what's great to see from uh, Nelson is that they've got two here in the top uh, twenty in the uh, eleven to twenty mark. Keep doing it, Nelson. Um, and finally, four or not finally four to ten. Here we go. Um, so what I'm really pleased to see is two. Um, Wellington courses in the uh, in the top ten. Um, Hikoi Koi Reserve. I mean, look if you I don't know if you played Hoi Koi Koi. It's I wish I could it's say such yes. an unassuming little nine hole course on like a little on the on the edge of the river slash coast um, in Patoni. Um, the is quite challenging, but there are some you can it's gettable. And and it gets people going round. It's great. It's it's fantastic. Man, I love it. I love a nine hole course. I mean, what do you reckon, chat? What what do you guys think about nine hole courses? Because I think they are, they definitely have a place in our disc golf community. I mean, just being able to pop out with my dogs mm. for you know forty five minutes to an hour and just punch around there, get a walk in for them rather than dragging them around in eighteen hole Queen, courses. Queens Park Reserve. That's is that eight? Is that a nine or an eighteen? 
that's, that's 18. 18. Okay, so I was going to say... Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, that's nine. nine. Okay, that's nine. I was going to say, that's nine. Berenpour is 10. Hikoikoi is nine. So yep. some, some good performances there from smaller courses, right? Um, yep. Uh, and so we'll 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 see. Ten whole courses are better. Yeah, uh, Josh is, is from Wellington as well. Um, Josh Group preferred team. Uh, yeah, they're they're all they're all Baron Port with its uh, Baron Port shrunk slightly, but not materially. Um, Queenstown Gardens for you. Seen some growth. Yeah, um, I don't really know what to put that down to. I mean, I know I play a lot of rounds. Well, obviously not in the last few months, but I play a lot of rounds with local guys that never score. Yeah. So I'd be interested to know where those numbers actually come yeah. from. Yeah, and also there'll be a lot of people who play Queenstown Gardens who are, you know, I've never played disc golf before, but here's a thing. I'll borrow some discs from the shop. or the, is there? Does that little coffee shop rent discs or let you borrow them or something, the one that's on the corner just uh, before the start? No, not that one. No, not that one. I don't know if they ever did. My friend owns that one now. Shout out you, Steve-O. Um, but you know, small planet rents this for yeah. five bucks. A bunch of the hostels do the same sort yeah. of thing. So um, I, I suspect that they get a hell of a traffic f- like that that doesn't get scored on UDisc because if you don't play disc golf, then why have you got UDisc? And, and tourism is yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. There's way more people playing now. Yeah. So um, I, I sus- yeah, that that's where Queenstown Gardens kind of suffers in 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 these numbers, but not in reality. You know. Yeah. Yeah, for <clears> sure. <throat> I mean, have we seen the stats of? actual people going around the course it would mm. be through through the roof um spa park has seen a bit of a decline um five thousand uh, people seven percent not not a, not huge amount but it's down from third to fifth um yep. so we just put that down to you just price I, I i don't know i don't know honestly um it'd be interesting to hear from some of the spa park guys obviously the um the spa park got rated the 60 first best course in the world um based mm-hmm. on the the, the disc ratings um although total player rounds have gone down um i don't know what that's i don't know what that's down to um it could be was the cyclone did the cyclone come through might that have stopped play for a, a number of times i know that i know that it wrecked a huge bunch of holes I don't know if Steve or Ken are in the in the um, in the in the comments. Yeah, anyone in um, the chat that can give us a bit more of an idea. I'm a bit too stout to have any the, idea. The the cyclone that came in and, and wrecked, I think, hole three, hole two, three, and four, uh, had a and did a bit of a job there, um, and also some on the uh, other side, seventeen, eighteen, I think. Um, that's the that that could they could have been affected by that and so the the course might have been closed or there might have been some holes that have been closed which put people off from playing I don't know. Um, yeah, Anthony yeah. saying pretty sure it did close the course. For okay, a bit. so it it could it could well have been that it could well have been that. Um, and I see five hundred people when six thousand people are going round. Five hundred people is is if the course is closed for three weeks, on average that's going to account for those five hundred players, right? So um, it's. Yep. Yeah, we've got a, we got a. Uh, is that right? Well, maybe closer to six weeks, quick, five, five weeks. Yeah, quick yeah that's quick my yeah, back in the envelope <laughs> maths there. Um, uh, so yeah, so there's the top four to ten, um, and then top, top three. three. <laughs> Chat, who's in third? <laughs> Who is your guess for third place? Who are we missing off the list? Who is in third? Yeah, let's just 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 give this a second. I'd be, Actually, yeah, I'd come be on, keen chat. to let's see, see who, who is in third place. People, people probably I got absolutely a, didn't get. People this have right. probably got a good idea of who is first, and probably who is second, but who's third? Probably more conspicuous by their absence so far is 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 probably is probably what it is. Um. Arn Burgess, how good is the sound this week? Yeah, we don't have any of these pesty guests on this week to ruin it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brett Carlyle was saying, Baron Paul Longs, unfortunately. No, Baron Paul Longs does not make it. Queen's Park, Warren Park. Yeah, okay, okay. We're having some right, guesses coming in. Let's, let's send it up the list. What do we got? Third place is Warren Park, right? So... Oh. Um, <clears throat> So this is this is uh, this is this is obviously a great result for for them. Uh, I've played Warren Park actually. I think I've played Warren Park anyway. I'm sure I have. I went out for a. I remember it was at the end of GCO last year, 
Um, and I think I played like a speed round with Ben Wheellake <laughs> and uh, and Phil Botter just before um, just before we uh, we had to go and catch a flight. Um, I'm just checking my Udisc profile that, that's a, to that, see if it's... That, that's a bold move, playing a speed round with those two young bucks. It was. Well, correct. So, hang on a second. I think it... Yeah, I think I have. I have. I have. That was right. I've played one one round at uh, Warren Park. So, yeah. Um, there you go. So... <laughs> So I'm, I'm oh, good job, Tommy Strawbridge. You nailed it. So I'm glad that I'm uh, I'm glad that I've uh, contributed to these numbers. But the uh, yeah, so they've seen a growth, thirty um, percent more players, and a increase uh, from eighth um, in 2022 up to third. So uh, so well done to everybody who goes around well to Wild Park. Um, we've had lots of guesses uh, so far. It's um, Warren is a nightmare when windy during football games. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was quite calm the down at the time. We went really hot, but calm. Um, uh, second place, who who do we think is in second place? This is perhaps a little bit easier to understand, especially if you've watched previous episodes of this kind of uh, kind of thing. Is uh, I mean, I obviously know. Yeah, that. Is <laughs> yeah Qu- Queens on. Park uh, Disc Golf Course in Invercargill um, has seen um, is in second place and has seen a small increase um, in the number of people um, playing it. Um, so yeah, that's they they stay in second but, place, but then. But then also remembering that they do have the the, the pro course, That's the true. golf course course, which is part of that course as well, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, so. totally. Yeah, so you've got to add kind of yeah. add the two together. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's in second place. We've we've both played Queens Park um, a, a couple of times. Love lovely course, lovely uh, Love and it. lovely park. It's one of those courses actually that is probably it's a little bit like a little bit like Jelly, but also I think like Harcourt Park. In the, it's a nice place to be if you're not playing disc golf. Um, I think you know Queens I mean? Park, Queens Park in general, if you've had the chance to explore <clears> it, <throat> is incredible. I think it's one of the better gardens in the whole of the country. Mm. I mean, it's got everything down to like the botanical gardens and the bird aviary, which is insane mm-hmm. down there. Yeah, uh, don't know if you had the chance to get in there, but they've got emus. Oh um, no, I didn't. I did, didn't. Didn't get. You, didn't get close to an emu. They win. They've got emus. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Well, there we are. So next time I shall have to go and check that out. Um, but yes, absolutely. If you've not played Queen's Park in Invercargill, then then make sure you make the trip all the way down south um, uh, to to check it out. It's uh, it's, a, it's a great course. Um, obviously, Levi Stout cuts his teeth um, around that on a regular basis. And finally, the uh, most popular course in New Zealand. Uh, most people have probably guessed it already. Struggle Street. Struggle Street. Struggle Street didn't make. Has Struggle Street closed? No, it's not closed, man. We've just uh, there, there's a few more, uh, a couple more private courses that have been popping up that the boys have been playing on. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the most popular course is Jelly Park um, in Christchurch. It has um, seen fewer people by about 60, 55. Uh, no, sixty five. 64 um fewer players played it this year compared to last year but broadly that's that that's it's more or less the same yeah. um and if we look at this just to put this kind of into context that means that um uh 41 rounds are played at jelly park every single day um yeah. every day and in, it's a hell of a lot more than that too it, it is it is it is i mean i've i've, I've heard stories of you know in summer, I would say, uh, summertime, six hundred people going out and playing on a day. Yeah, I would um, say, I would say, I would say that many rounds by ten thirty a.m. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, well done to Christchurch, well done to Jelly Park. Um, you take the honours once again uh, this year, and also it's worth saying that um, if we have a look at the numbers here, Jelly Park at fifteen thousand, uh, Queens Park at ten thousand. Warren Park at 6,000, right? And then everyone else, you know, below 6,300. So what that means is that Jelly Park is doing two and a half times the third most popular course. It's crazy, isn't it? Right? Just so let that, that, that sink in. The, it, it, and we'll see when we, we break this, this, this data down by city in a minute. And obviously, with the the winner is is Christchurch, right? Because they've got three of the top four. Um, but we see how that um, how that 
uh, kind of translates how je how popular Jelly Park is. So just when we get to those numbers, which is in a minute, just remember that figure of fifteen thousand for twenty twenty three. Um, Tommy Strawbridge saying he's seen up to sixty people queuing at hole one there before. Oh yeah, look, that's just that's just mental. That I I, I if I saw that many people, I, I just go to a different course, right? You've got so many options in Christchurch now that you just. I think yeah. I just even if it meant driving across town to Ascot or whatever. You... If you if you were to show up at the course with a six pack, it'd be gone before you started the round. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, so this is the by city. Okay, so I've I've been a bit broad in some of the some of the uh, you know where where this is. So this is uh, this is the top twenty um, cities uh, and the number of courses that they have um, and um, and what's in their growth, right? So yeah, I think it's it it we've seen we've seen growth pretty much across the board. Some have seen huge growth. Waimati, Twizel, um, Masterton, seen some huge, uh, huge jumps, and they've they've broken into the into the top twenty because of that. Um, some have grown slower. New Plymouth, we saw Inglewood was uh, I think forty one on the list, and Maryland's was I think mid twenties. So, um, yeah, and Palmerston North now has two courses: um, the Golf Club and Linklater. So, so yeah. Um, and the top cities, top 10. Um, here we go. I, look at Nelson. I don't know if Morgan's still with it. Is Morgan still with it? Just frozen. I was just I about to say, have I, have I still got you, man? Yeah, yeah, have yeah. I still got yeah, you? I've, check, check. You are, you are still here. <laughs> Nelson, right? Look at that. It's gone. It, it's it's over tripled in the number of people who are, who are playing. And more... More scored on new disc disc golf is played in Nelson than is played in Queenstown, and that includes Jardine, Tucker's, and Queenstown Gardens. Yep. So it sounds like we've just got a lot more committed disc golfers in Nelson than we do in Queenstown right now. It, committed to the cause. It's interesting, right? Stat show. It's interesting because we'll we'll get to uh, something a little bit in a minute, which might explain some of this, sort of. And it was a point that actually I was sharing some of these stats with the old farts group earlier on today. And uh, the comment came up that actually um, it matters more the unique players. Right. How, so how many unique players are playing? So not how many people have, how, not how many rounds have been played, but how many people are playing rounds. Right. And, and that. So we'll have to see. Um, let's go Wellington. Indeed. Indeed. I think that's fantastic. Um, just from a personal perspective, um, obviously two in the top ten, uh, three in the top fifteen um, uh, is will will push you into second. I'm going to bring it up again, Matt. Like two weeks ago, I would have been a bit more shocked at that statistic, but after <clears throat> uh, when you had the pop up for fundraising mm. on the show a couple of weeks ago, I'm I'm not as shocked at that after hearing the figures that you had there. So yeah, yeah big ups Wellington guys, keep it up. I mean. Yeah. That central part of the country, Wellington, Nelson, really pushing, pushing the. It um, is. I mean that the boat out. That that part of the country has really, really done well. Um, yeah, well done, guys. Auckland suffers because of a decline in a couple of um, uh, courses. A few courses have fallen out of the top fifty, which affects these numbers. And also, um, uh, we've seen uh, reductions in other in other courses as well around Auckland. So um, that's an interesting one. So it'd be interesting to to, to, to try and find out what what is up with that it, uh, uh, do people just not use udisc in auckland is it just not a thing is there an alternative or do is it is it just not i don't know what what's going on i i don't know is the yeah i i think because auckland is quite a sprawled city right it's a very wide city it covers a lot of area that it perhaps and i might be unfair in saying this and if you're from auckland and you think differently then please tell me um, it perhaps doesn't have as much of a club atmosphere, if you know what I mean, than something like Nelson or Wellington might have, or indeed Christchurch or any of perhaps any of these other things. Right? Do, does it does it get that same kind of like in Wellington? Every month there's a club. There's there's every month there's two club days, 
and on top of that every week there's a another there's a there's a club like uh, Sunday social league right so that that encourages you that if you're a member of the Great Wellington Disc Golf Club you come together and you play in those in those in those rounds i don't know Auckland probably does something similar but because it's so sprawled out is is the is the kind of concentration yeah. of players does it yeah, suffer from that kind of concentration? As opposed to the concentration. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, to- it's it's kind of hard to put our finger on the pulse on that one without actually being there, isn't it? I mean, you, you, can, you can obviously speak really well to the growth of the game in Wellington, um, and I can speak well to the the not not growth the not not growth of mm. queenstown and the amount of tourists we have that don't have you <clears throat> but uh yeah we don't know about auckland we're, we're yeah. not there so if anyone's in the chat with some ideas let us know um scott's saying you can't sneak out out of work for a quick round in auckland that's absolutely true um whereas you know you can you can do that in other places um yeah, Gus so, saying that any course is like minimum forty minutes away from where he was living. Yeah, but and that's that kind of sprawled kind of thing, right? So it's yeah. it, it it must be it, it must be something to do with that. But anyway, that's but having said that, that was the case in twenty twenty two, right? This Auckland hasn't suddenly become a sprawled city in the last year. This that yeah. so that those effects would have been happening in 2022. So what I want to what I really want to know is why now, why this year, have those numbers uh, reduced by by so much? We'll, we should yeah, we'll have to do some digging into that. We'll have to see. Um, right, Invercargill um, has more or less stayed um, stayed still. The top course, the two courses, it is actually just one course kind of two layouts as two courses yeah um uh, nelson in fifth shout out to the nelson guys that's a huge increase and uh and so very well done um uh, putting in uh, getting getting yourself up to fifth um queenstown dunedin and wanaka are all sort of where they previously were topor taking a hit as we spoke about before not quite sure what's uh what's what's um What's going on there? Um, Ryan's saying that Hendo's stream caused issues for ages due to flooding. Yeah, so they, it could well be that there's there's this kind of weather events which are happening, which are um, that should which uh, solely affect um, one area of the country. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's the by city stats. So shout out to uh, yeah, big ups to Wellington there for the uh, the bump. Um, and then finally by Ireland. Um, so overall, so this is just the top 50 courses, remember, okay. Um, the South Island uh, has has grown by 27%. The North Island stayed kind of the same. Now that's largely because Auckland has seen a dip the, and Topol has seen uh, a dip. The rest of the um, North Island has, has, has moved up um, and accounts for that difference. Um Remember, these are the top 50 courses, so they don't account for courses 51 through to 80 something. Um, so that's there's there has been we have seen growth and we'll see the total numbers across the whole of New Zealand at the end um, where we can see, um, you know, uh, how how things are, are going. Uh, so this next one's interesting. This is unique players, right? So these are the top 20 pl- top 20 courses by number of unique players so this is slightly this is slightly different um and you'll notice that there are some courses on here that do very well compared to others you'll see that queen's park is in uh, 12th place where actually it came in second in um in the overall number of rounds and the and that rppy figure is the rounds per person per year um uh figure right so you take the total number of rounds divided by 511 and that's the number of rounds per person per year um and so yeah queen's park's got a a loyal 500 following that all play 20 rounds a year i mean obviously it doesn't work out like that the 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 the, the, uh the, the the median is probably a little bit lower um i suspect with all of these actually um <clears throat> So yeah, um, Bottle Lake. There were nine people who played it in twenty twenty two. That jumped to four hundred and fifty. I would say that is the <laughs> course. 
I'd say that's the course designers and, themselves. And his family, yeah. It's probably, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's just the Watkinson. If your surname didn't, did, doesn't, isn't Watkinson, then you, you probably weren't in that nine. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, that's, that's obviously the impact of a new course there, you can see. Yeah. Um, moving on to the top ten. Um, and... So here we go. So this is this is showing the impact of um, perhaps touristy towns. Um, Queenstown Gardens in second place with a thousand unique players. People going there on holiday, getting getting around in. This is even not necessarily overseas tourists, but but New Zealand tourists as well, right? Um, is good to see. No courses in Wellington in the top ten, um, <laughs> right? Which perhaps tells another story again that there's a uh, um, there's a fewer number of players that play a lot of rounds uh, in Wellington. That would suggest Jelly Park seems to be doing well on all fronts. What's all? But what's interesting here is that the change from 2023 to 2022 has it has massively increased, right? For pretty much the whole Usually. country, right? These top eight yep. have all got near on, if not 50 percent, uh, or at least 30, but sometimes often 50 percent higher. Um, number of players, which shows that there's there's yeah. more players getting to these courses. That will be a combination of new players and also more people travelling. Um, yeah, more people, more people <clears throat> travelling within New Zealand. Obviously, a few more tourists coming back to New Zealand, and yeah, just oh, again more Kiwi players yeah. travelling around to go get in, get involved in these courses. Yeah, and and that's great, right? Because it means it's putting more players in at the bottom of the funnel, if you like. Uh, if you're if 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 our funnel is. Um, uh, you know, getting getting top players out of the bottom of the funnel, then putting more in at the top gives you gives you a far greater a great far greater chance. Now it's what's um, so lots more people playing overall, but playing less rounds overall. Yeah, so the average number of rounds per person in New Zealand was fewer than in um, than in twenty twenty two. That's correct, Brett. But the total number of players is greater and more than makes up for it. Um, yeah. yeah. So Tom just Tom just bringing up a point, well not a point, but Tom just bringing up that uh, sounds like there's nine new baskets going over to Rabbit Island in Nelson, which is oh awesome wow, here. another course, fantastic. We shall see how that um, jumps Nelson in next year's figures. Yeah, well I'm not too sure if Rabbit <coughs> Island's all, always had a course. I've never played, so I'm not sure. Tom, was it tone poles there or old baskets? What did we have? Because I've always known there's a course out there that I wanted to go play, but cool to hear there's nine new baskets going out there mm, potentially. Absolutely. Now, I can't aggregate this data um, by city because I don't have it by city. What I've done previously is I've bunged a city <coughs> name next to all of the um, next to all of the courses and then added them up. And that works for the rounds, but it doesn't work for unique players because obviously in Christchurch, there'll be crossover between the unique players playing at Jelly Park and the unique players playing at Warren Park, for example. So um, it doesn't quite work. On a on a city or by island basis, or indeed at a New Zealand level either. So uh, I'm not able to uh, reliably, without this data in more detail that I don't have, um, able to uh, able to aggregate this data by um, by any broader metric than uh, than course. Uh, a local course for local people. Uh, so this is the um, top 10 rounds per person per year. Uh, so Berenpore, uh comes in second. Um, if you play Berenpore, you play it more than nearly every, uh, nearly more than every other, than other people play other courses, is what I meant to say. <laughs> I don't know how to, yeah, that's, I've not quite said that right. But it's dwarfed by Queen's Park Disc Golf Course, as we've seen. Um They've got a, a loyal crew, 500 strong, all playing 20 times a year. Um, yeah. So, yeah, a local course for you. This is a minimum of 200 unique players, right? So I've filtered out the smaller courses here um, so that it's uh, statistically more significant. That's the, that's the <clears throat> fine print right at the top. That here, is, that is the fine print, yeah. I yeah, <laughs> just need to cover myself before the chat goes mental. Right. Um, and finally, uh, tourist towns. So this is the um, this is the lowest rounds per person per year. So this is suggesting that if you go and play at a course in Tekapo, then actually you're probably going to play it twice and then not again. 
in a year. Okay, so this will be people driving through um, from one place to another or maybe having a practice round before the tournament or maybe even the tournament. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's uh, I, I think that's that's what is going on there. Hanma um, probably has the the, the same. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a course that people drive through on the way uh, whilst the Kai Korda um, road is closed. Then Hanma used to be the way to get to Christchurch. But um, it's uh, well. Yes and no. You don't drive through Hem. You don't drive through Hemna though. You drive past the turnoff. Oh, okay, fair enough. So, okay, but even it's, it's. I think it's still like another twenty minutes, half an hour past the turnoff by the bungee bridge. Yeah, but if I was driving from Picton to Christchurch, then I and I there was a course in Hemna and Kaikoura was shut. Then I'd I'd, I'd stop yeah. in, you know, because it stretch your legs. Well. Yeah, and <clears> and you got the hot pools there. Yeah. it's a hell of a location. Um, yeah, lug it. Is another one that's kind of on the way. It's 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 not really a kind of a destination course. You probably go there to uh, to, to to on the way to somewhere. Um, yeah, I well, it's it's kind of the back road to get back through to Wanaka. If you you know you can turn off right at Terrace if you're coming south um, off, on the main road. But I think that's almost down to local players. Strangely enough, yeah, the, the yeah they created a bit of a I don't know if it's called the Luggett Disc Golf community whatever it's mm -hmm. called but it's a small little town and i i think a lot of that's going to be local players from that area okay all right well which is interesting because that would suggest that if it was that way around it would suggest the other way right where you've got a, a yep. lot a, a few people playing a lot of rounds what you've got yeah. here is a lot of people playing fewer rounds playing fewer relatively rounds. speaking yeah. right so i i that for me it suggests more of a and I someone mentioned it, Scott Brook has mentioned it once on the way there once on the way back um, it, it, you know it, it could be closer to that um, yep. and then a, a couple in Christchurch um, Brooker Ave is probably more down to the weather and it being closed for a, for a period of time and then um, Tiano um, destination course um, as well yeah. One of my favourite places to play disc golf is Ivan Wilson Park, Park in Tiana. Beautiful location, mm. beautiful park. Um, and then finally, uh, this is the country growth. So this is total rounds across all courses um, scored in New Zealand. So it's gone from 132,000 to 154, which uh, for the uh, quick maft among you um, is an increase of... 154 to 132 is about a 16% increase. Uh, less of an increase than we saw um, percentage-wise anyway um, compared to uh, 2022 to 2021, which saw a 40% increase. And then 2021 to 20 from 2020 nearly doubled, right? So it's it, it, the growth is slowing, um, but the growth is still there. Yeah, the gr the growth is showing slowing, but yeah, there's so many factors that come into yeah, it. And I mean, even yeah. just the basic one again is people maybe not wanting to pay fifty bucks for you. Well, that's it, right? And um, I think will that will that will curtail a few. And, and the example came up today on the old farts chat. Um, one of the guys was saying that he's renewed it for himself, but he hasn't for his three kids. So now, when when yeah, he right. when he goes out and plays, previously they would have had their rounds scored. Um, and now they won't, and so it's it, it, it. I can see how that cost is going to make a difference, and for a family membership, it, it makes a big difference. Two hundred bucks is in oh, one go is, is is a lot if you've got three kids, huge, right? Huge, to, huge. to shell out, you got to put these kids. You got to put these kids to work, man. Come on. <laughs> that's right. So um, so yeah. So anyway, that's our that's our stats from um, from from around the country. Um, this is kind of part one because we're going to go into part two um will be a little bit later on in the year and we'll be looking at the quality of the disc golf being played right so we'll be diving into the some of the pdga stats um of some of the sanctioned tournaments and picking out like previous to how we had the quiz last year morgan do you remember that i absolutely do Matt. <laughs> um we uh, we will try and do another quiz we we might be able to also do it um we might also be able to do it as a bit of a competition have it up on screen and people can put in their answers and 
and and then it will do a load of funky stuff. We'll see. We'll see how we get on. But um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it, that's 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 still to come. This is this one was focused on on course stats. So look, if if you want a copy of this uh, presentation, um, then please email me after the uh, after the um, after the show. And I'll more than happily share the uh, the the presentation with you, and then you can go and do what you like with the with the numbers. Uh, in the past, people have... but he will he will not share it until we get to three hundred and fifty <laughs> subscribers. Well, that's right. We, we and do I'm pointing at the wrong camera. We do we do we do have four just four more subscribers. There's a lot of people itching for a giveaway who are trying to encourage people to uh, to subscribe, which is which is fantastic. Um, yeah, so uh, there we go. There we go. Um, Fantastic. That's that's our stats for for uh, for, for for this for twenty twenty three. I still feel like an imposter. I still feel like Statman Adam Rhyme should have been sat here <laughs> looking good instead of instead of this guy. But you know, no, it, we got through. It's it. not it's not about your ability <laughs> with numbers. It's more about how you can interpret and tell the story that goes along with them. So uh, so yeah. Uh, look. Um, Morgan, what else has been happening? Have you got any news for 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 you? It's been a bit quiet the last couple of weeks. We've not had any tournaments. It's been uh... yeah, for sure. We're uh, we're definitely building into some uh, some bigger weeks. Absolutely, in the disc golf we've, community. we've got I some guess, coming up. Sorry, the disc golf world. Yeah, huge, huge weeks coming up. Um, I mean, I'm pretty excited to get up to Christchurch for GCO, mm -hmm. then Armageddon, and then Montana Flat yeah. the week after that. So. I've Got the, oh and Queen sorry and the Queenstown Classic the week before all of those so I'm going not for the triple threat but the the four peak crown on that one um, but yeah other news uh, yeah I, I personally have some some pretty cool news and 